This is Erica Chablis, and this tutorial is on making the hipster bag from Starfish Embroidery. If you're interested in making this bag, stick around. Let me show you some of the things you're going to need. Um, you're going to need some type of lining. You need a zipper for your bag, and I would suggest 12, 14 inches. You're going to need um, your vinyl. I'm going to use uh, a color block style, so it's going to have white, red, and blue. So I do have those colors here. You can make it all one color. I'm just going to do a color block on this one. You're going to need the 6x10 hoop. That's what this file calls for. So you cannot do that on the P800, unfortunately. This is on the NQ1700 for this tutorial. You're going to need um, some type of strap. I'm going to use this from Joann's. I'm hoping I can later find this cheaper um, in bulk online because this was... Um, fairly expensive um and then i'm going to use poly mesh for my stabilizer that was suggested um to not use um the thick thicker um stabilizers also suggested was the 9014 needle instead of the regular 70 75 14 is it 75 14 um when i tried it with my first bag this part here um, it becomes very thick and so it did struggle a little bit you can see the stitching is not as perfect so I have given this one away to one of my sisters um, so the stitching is not as perfect as I would like to sell um, so I am going to try this to see if this is better for me then you will also need now for this bag here I'm going to do the D-rings but the D-rings are on order and I've been waiting for a while so I can ship this on to her um, I need the not D-rings I need the Oh, what do you call those things? These here. I need these here, the swivel hooks. Um, I, this one here is the one and a half, and I need the one inch because the webbing that I'm going to use is one inch. So I'm waiting on that to finish this bag up. So anyway, um, you are going to need that. I'm going to also need... If you're going to do the wrap part, this is what you'll need. You'll need one of those um, buckles. And you're going to need these parachute buckles here. Now, this is the slider. Not the buckles. The slider buckle. It's a slider piece. And it slides across your strap to make it adjustable. And then these are going to be the clip parts. I was thinking you only needed one of these, but you needed two. So I had to run back to the store. And these are fairly expensive. These are like $5 a piece. So you're already talking about ten dollars just for this piece of the bag so whoever's making this bag charge accordingly because you're putting your work into it you've got all these expensive materials you need to charge all right oh we'll need one more thing some type of bone tool um this is to press down the fabric and you'll see me do that in the video i'm also going to use some scissors so i have scissors here I love my applique scissors, so I always use that on every construction of everything I do. And then some tape. I'm using painter's tape. And you're going to need some fabric glue to do your uh, lining bag to seal it together. The rotary cutter to um, cut. And I quite possibly may need this here. I don't know, a ruler. I'm going to keep it handy just in case. Now, if you're going to get the slider buckles... And you're going to be making these all the time i would suggest you buy them in bulk you can buy them in bulk on amazon um i ran to the store and saw them on, in bulk at joanne so uh, they were still kind of expensive i think they were 14 dollars for a pack probably 10 or so so um they do have these in the twos but i would try to get the bulk if you're doing um if you're doing a lot of them all right so those are the materials you're going to need we are going to hoop the stabilizer all right, here's my 6x10 hoop. I'm going to take my poly mesh, and this is on a roll, so more than likely I got it off of Amazon. Um, I will find that link and then put it in the description for this video. So I'm just going to get a piece of it. It's not that much. And I tend to leave some of my stabilizers in the bag. Um, I know here's the one that on top the one you put on top they said to make sure you keep that in the bag so if it comes in the bag i try to keep that in the bag like that all right so now i'm going to take my stabilizer the bottom of my hoop 
on the table. Put my poly mesh top. Look for the arrows. Hoop the um the hoop. I'm gonna place the top on. Twist. Be careful, gotta be careful. I think I'm gonna leave that just like this. All right, so, um, yeah, be careful. I pulled that. I was trying to make it tighter, and I knew as I was saying, I was like, You're gonna tear it, you're gonna tear it. We are not using cutaway in a bag like I normally would do in my tutorials because, um, we, we don't need to be extra thick. And Kimberly suggested we use poly mesh, so that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna go over to the computer screen so I can show you how to open it up in your file because. If you're on the NQ1700E, I'm suggesting you flip the bag. So I want to make sure you know how to do that. Because when I tried the bag at first, how Kimberly had it in the system, um, it wasn't working right for me. So I'm going to flip it like all my bags are and show you how to do that. I'm sliding the hoop onto the machine and pressing that button down. Once you purchase the file from Starfish Embroidery to do the hipster bag, you will open it up and you'll see several files. I am using the type PS because I'm on the NQ1700E. I'm going to double click it and you're going to find the file that you want. If you have a bigger hoop than me, you can use these other ones. I am using the one for 6x10. So that is this one right here. I'm going to double click to open it. Click, click. And Brilliant should open up for you. And it's going to open up in the bag this way. This is the top of the bag and this is the bottom of the bag. Whenever I do bags, my bottom is over here and my top is over here. So I'm going to flip this item here. I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to go right here to these arrows and I'm just going to rotate it. Now you can rotate it in your, in your machine, but I did it here because I want to go ahead and add the words here. So whatever logo or every words you want to add, add it here and then you'll save it to your jump drive or Wi-Fi it over to your machine and then you'll do it. This way that the bag is faced this way works better in the machine. All right, let's get back to it. All right, once you add your media, you go find your file. All right, there it is there. Turn over. I'm going to say in edit. I'm going to embroidery I changed my tension okay all right and then I'm going to actually change my needle out I'm trying this um, 9014 out to see if it'll go through the vinyl a little bit better since it's a little thick with this pattern stuck in leather so I am going to use are they all the same Oh, yeah, they're all the same. Okay, great. Some of the packs have it where they are um, they're different. So to open up a pack of needles, if you get this kind, it's just a slider. So you just slide it. And I'm going to get one of the needles out. I'm going to use my little sewing bag that came with the machine. And I actually have the video tutorial of opening up this unboxing for this machine. I need to post that. That was a while ago, and I still have it on my phone. I need to clear that off my phone. So to take this needle out, there's a little groove here. That little groove there, this goes into it. And you just twist righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I need to do lefty loosey to um, undo that. I'm going to save this. Some people switch their needles out every project. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I switch it out when it breaks or if I see that it's not doing well. So I'm going to get one of these. I think it's supposed to come out of it. Yeah. There we go. It's supposed to come slide a little bit further. So I can get it out. I'm going to switch it out. The, the flat side goes toward the back. The round part goes in the front. So I'm just 
doesn't feel like I loosened it enough. There we go. Make sure it's all the way in there. Push up as far as you can. And then while holding the needle, I'll just tighten it. Ouch. Hit my hand. All right. Now that it's tight, you just go ahead and thread it as normal. And then it should go through just like that. All right. My child. I can tell one of my children been in my room. Probably the youngest. Yes, the youngest. <laughs> my child been in my room. <laughs> he had took all my needles and put them in like this. And he stuck it in my little jar. Remember, I, from one of my videos, I was told you I was saving the little threads because I saw it on one of the groups. It's coming on. All right, let's get back onto this. All right, this is loaded in. I have changed my needle. And step number one is going to actually do the... Um, the placement stitch for us it says 23 minutes it's probably gonna be a little bit longer because you're switching out putting fabric doing all that kind of stuff so i am going to lower my foot and we're going to stitch out the placement stitch All right, that was the placement stitch. And so the placement stitch, this is the top of the zipper. This is the bottom of the zipper. And this is where the teeth go here, this middle line. So when you place your zipper on this line, you need to make sure this, the teeth part is on that line. So I'm going to take some regular scotch tape. And I'm going to make sure, that's what I'm saying, you need a zipper that's um, 12, 14. So you can make sure it goes outside here. Make sure it extends way out beyond this, this part, the low wing part. I turned it around so you can see. I'm just making sure that the zipper teeth are on, on the, um, that, that middle line. You want the zipper teeth on the middle line. And I'm just going to tape it here. I'm taping it midway just to be sure. I don't want it to move. And I'm going to do the same thing on the side. Now we're on to the next step. Step number two is just tacking down the zipper. Some of the tape is savable. Um, is not but I do remove the tape once the zipper is tap tacked down for me I go ahead and turn the hoops over and I take out the stabilizer so I can try to take out as much as possible without having to do that at the end. So I, what I normally do is I look where the zipper teeth are and then I take out 
what's on either side of that. So I'm going to gently take my seam ripper and you're gonna have to really gently do this because this um, poly mesh is super thin and I felt myself grabbing part of the zipper just then. So once you get the zipper um, get inside, you turn it around for that ball part. I would not do this with both ends with the sharp ends. Find you a seam ripper that um, does not have um, the sharp end on both ends. And hopefully, let's see, yep, that should be. This is very different from the cutaway stabilizer, so I'm very nervous about doing that right there. Maybe. But I want this out. All right, so we're gonna gently do it. I may have to cut more later. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna try to cut a little bit on this side with scissors. And then there's the other side of the zipper teeth. I'm gonna try to get that side. Again with the bob bar ball part of the seam ripper. And then again with the scissors to cut this other side. May have to cut more later. All right, let's go on to the next step. We're gonna flip our hoop over so we can put the lining on the back. And what you're gonna do is just take your lining and put it up toward that last line of that zipper and tape it down. Make sure that your fabric piece, uh, Kimberly has the cut pieces in the PDF, but make sure it extends out toward your uh, flaps on the side. I just kind of eyeballed and grabbed a piece of fabric that I already had. So make sure you follow those um, cut pieces, especially if you have not done it back before. So we're just making sure it's passing that line there. So when it does that tack down stitch, it will catch the liner piece. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the front of the bag with my front interior. I'm going to flip the back piece over, place it toward the bottom of the zipper. And so if I hold my hand here and I press down, I can see that it'll cover the bag. So always check when you're doing your bags. So I'm going to take this piece and tape it down. And usually I hold the front so I make sure the back part is taped really well. And you know what? It's going to go over. I'm going to pull my tape down just a little. Now 
Usually the painter's tape does better. But I'm just using this tape right now. Okay, so I have both of the pieces taped down. I'm going to put it back in my machine with this side going in. And it's going to stitch a tack down. So I'll be able to move this down this way and stitch. We're going to stitch the um, embroidery design on it. I'm going to do the one with the design. We're going to skip over to the design, do that, and then we'll take this down. We're going to leave this one up for now. I'm going to slide this back on the machine. And I'm making sure my fabric piece and my liner, my fabric topper and my uh, liner um, are flat. I'm actually going to look, kind of lift up my hoop and just look under to make sure. So when it does the, the stitch down, it will not um, catch it. So we're going to do that one quick little tack down. I don't need this piece and I'm actually going to take the tape off the back as well so it won't be um, my design will not be stitching on top of that now on the back side I only did tape on the edges so I'm going to go back and put that back because I do not want this to move at all I want it to stay in place I'm just tap, tap, uh, tape on the ends, making sure it stays up because I'm getting ready to do that JSU logo. I am licensed um, on the front side. So when I flip it back over and I put the hoop back on the machine, just a little bit. This part here, this is the only part that needs to come down. Make sure your liner is flat up. And I'm going to press this over here. You can finger press or you can use that um, pressing to any kind of pressing tool. I have one that I want to show you at the very beginning for our materials. And I'm just going to take this and press down as I go and move it in. Do not use this sharp part. Use the rounded piece if you have one of these. And just smooth it out. And then I'm ready. For step four, I'm going to do the top stitch for this bag. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to skip and do my logo. So in step four is going to do the top stitch. My machine was jamming and I was like, what's going on? So I decided to stop and show you if you are using one of those um, thread holders. Don't have stuff around your machine. One. That's what I got going on. And my thread started going all kind of places. It was jammed around this little thing here. And then it started jamming around this right here. Because it caught, got caught up. So make sure you do, do not have stuff everywhere with such a machine. We're gonna restart that step. I had to clean up my area. Stuff going on. Okay, 
Okay, I was on step four and I jumped. This was the step four is tacking down the front of the um of the bag and then I'm going to the logo. So I skipped to the end of it and I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll come back. to the top um, you'll do you'll make sure that your lining is up and do the embroidery piece and then pull your liner down so that's what I did with this one I'm going to take this tape off let me see what kind of stuff so I'm just going to clean it up real quick All right. and then I'm going to take this liner piece and I'm actually going to cut it a little bit. I have way more than I need. And I'm making sure I have a piece here to um, do the turning piece so I don't need this part here. And you can definitely follow the directions from Kimberly. I just grabbed a piece. I'm going to leave that there. Cut a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to make sure I tape the side so it stays down. So you can reuse your tape, which is what I'm doing. Or you can get some fresh new tape. And I'm just making sure the corners, the sides are taped down. And then on the front side, let me add a little tape. Because our next step here is to do this top piece here. We're going to um, add our pieces there. All right, now what we're going to do is take that strip for the inside liner and we're going to put it on the top of the zipper line the placement line and we're going to put it there right that because what it's going to do is tack down this part and we're going to flip it over like this and then this is what the inside will look like to your back so we have to tack on uh, tack it down so we're going to use some tape place it on that zipper line I'm going to put a piece right here in the middle just to make sure it doesn't move and then I'll remove it once the, um, the stitch happens. And I'm going to flip it over and we're going to add the top, the top piece in the same manner. Remember I stopped and jumped around because I was adding um, a design to the front, but we stopped on number five and number five is going to tack down those two pieces the top um the top part of the front and the top part of the back which is the liner so i'm going to tack it down then we're going to fold it over and do one more tack down so let me run this i need to switch to red
All right, so you'll take your your uh, project off the um, machine, and then we're gonna remove all the tape that um, we put on the top piece. I'm gonna leave the tape on the other part because this needs to be finger pressed down. And then I'm going to put tape back here just to hold it out the way. I'm gonna add a piece at the top just to make sure. All right. So I have that done there. I'm gonna flip it back over. I'm gonna do the same for this one. I'm gonna finger press. And if you have like um, some type of bony tool or something that can help you press, I'm gonna use this thing here. Just help me press this down. And then I'm gonna take it back. Make sure I don't take these two together. And then this one. And let me put one more, make sure this stays out the way. Because what it's gonna do now, is one more. It's going to put a stitch across here and it'll be on the front and the back. And this next step is number six and it's just going to do that um, tack down stitch. So we're going to tack down the front and the back at the same time. Now, if you're going to do a pocket in the front versus doing the um, design, this is where you would do that step now. But I'm doing the one with no pocket in the, um, the design on the front. All right. I had to re-thread my machine. I... It was not sounding right, so I um, re-thread and redid the bobbin. So now we should um, be good to go. This was step seven. This was just the placement for um, the piece that goes on each side. So we did that one. I'm just pulling it over so you can see. It's doing a line here to give me my placement for my tab. And I'm going to place my tab here and then it's going to do a tack down and then we're going to do it like this so we're getting ready to do step number eight and you'll need two of those we're going to do one on each side and do the second tab and we're going to repeat all the steps that we just did over here so it's going to make the tack down the placement stitch we're going to tack it down and then we're going to do the top stitch what i did for step number 10 when it did the placement stitch i had to go into my uh paper clip right here or the paper thing here and i went to um embroidery foot height your standard is on 1.5 because it's in black that lets you know that standard and I moved it to 4.0 to uh, make sure that it went over um, the zipper piece here because it kept catching here this piece here 
and this piece of vinyl plus this zipper was making it bulky. So what I did was I um, lifted my embroidery foot on the 1700E and it was able to go across it no problem. So I suggest when you get to that one or even when you're here, move your um, embroidery foot height just for that piece. I'm going to lower it back um, for once I finish um, fin doing this tab. All right, let me do this tab real quick. The tab is in my pocket. All right, we're going to repeat the step of placing this right over the line. And it is going to um, tack it down. And then we're going to take it. Uh-oh, wrong way. I'm sorry, this way. <laughs> Put the the um, edge of it against this line here because once, once it tacks it down, we're going to fold it over like this, the same way we did on this other side. So we're going to place it right over, just a little bit over it here where the placement is. We're going to place it there. And then we're going to run step number 11. having a hot time. I'm going to do that again. I don't know if it's my zipper or what. Your zippers may be a little bit different. I normally don't use this type of zipper, but I thought it was super cute and they are seeming to give me a little trouble than my regular zippers that I use. So I'm going to try this step again. Okay, I'm gonna try it again and see. It's jamming right when it gets to that zipper piece. Yeah, I heard it again. I heard it again. All right, let's do it. I'm going to stop it right at the zipper because it actually st stitched a little bit here and it stopped here. So I'm gonna go there. Oh, after I re rethread it. It only seems to do it with the um, with the zipper. So I'm just gonna finger press this down right here. Uh-oh. I'm gonna finger press this down here because now it's gonna do a top stitch on top of it just like it did on this other side. Okay. So this would, should be putting the top stitch on there. Okay, now both are done. So I'm gonna take uh, the parachute um, buckle. You can get these at Joanne. And I'm taking a piece of webbing, also at Joanne's. And you're gonna take the buckle. They actually come like this. It's like this. And then I'm just unsnapping. And you can hand sew it. I'm gonna use a sewing machine because I have one. But if not, you just place it in here. Just need a little piece. And then I'm going to stitch across here. But you could just take your um, threaded needle if you only have an unbroidered machine. And I'll be right back. All right, so once it does the uh, placement stitch and you get your hardware, all I did was just um, stitch a piece together. Um, I guess I should measure that for you. 
I am doing it's about two inches so four inches I just wrapped it around and it came up came out to be two inches and then I just took um, a lighter and I burned it the edges because this does unravel if you if you happen to use this now you can use uh regular material like i did with my first um bag but this one here um, i'm using the weapon so yeah we'll see and then what we're going to do is take this placement stitch here Wait a minute. there we go this placement stitch here and we're going to um put it right at the um i'm going to make sure that my hardware is at the edge here so it's going to give you about let's see if you just need direct measurements it's about this much hang a hangover yeah so all i did was i put the i wrote a t on the top so i can know and i'm gonna go back and hopefully take that off <clears throat> i hope i can take that off i didn't think about that i wrote a t on there <laughs> And I may not need to, I'm hoping I can get that off. Okay, I should have did a um, different type of marker. All right, <clears throat> so my hardware is right here at the edge of this thing here. And it's, um, I have it centered in here in between that line. It's gonna stitch over this here. All right, we're on step 14. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but uh, it comes out so cute. And my embroidery height is still up high. Ooh, fingers out the way. So what it's going to do now is do the same thing over here. It's going to give me a placement stitch, number 15. And then I'm going to put my hardware that my crazy self wrote to tea on. So we're going to repeat those same steps we did on the other side. It gave me the placement stitch here. I already have my heart we're ready. I did not write the T on this one, so that's good. <laughs> I'm looking to see. Okay, so this is the top. All right, so I'm going to place this, um, center this here on that placement, and I'm going to put it at the same spot by you putting this piece, the hardware piece, the hardware piece is gonna hit the top just like it did on the other side. So it's gonna be placed right here and it's gonna hit right there. Yeah. All right. And that way it's lined up. And you could also, what I was looking like it's happening is this a, uh, ending at the same spot here so it's going to end right there as I stitch there so I'm going to place this here all right and then I'm going to press the button and try to keep my fingers out the way all right now I'm going to let go I decided to put a little piece of tape there to make sure it stayed down. It's still having some trouble. I think I'm going to just lower my foot a little bit. My foot is really high. <clears throat> it's on the floor still. So I'm going to go change it. That may help it. I have it on two right now. Um, let me do that step. That's better. I know where my foot. Yeah. Yeah. Or 
turn my foot back to uh, close to where it should be for the standard. It's going to help that. All right, we are now ready for step 17. So now that we have completed that part, I am going to take all this tape off of these pieces here. So I'm going to leave it for now over there, but the inside, I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Because I don't need that. I'll move this tape over just a little bit so I'll be having to um, take scissors to get that out. So now that we have um, the hardware installed and I've removed the tape from here, I'm going to leave the tape here and I'm probably going to. All right, so I just need to put my backing there. I want a very colorful bag, so I'm doing uh, like a color block. My front is red. I'm gonna do this blue on the back. I use the same blue for my um, sides there. So I'm gonna put this over it. I got a pretty big piece, but if you do not get a piece like this, um, make sure that you look to make sure it's covering the whole area. So I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna have to leave my embroidery foot high because I need it to go all the way around here. So let me tape this down. I'm just getting a couple of pieces of tape. Since it's the front, I kind of watch it. Um, for the back, I tape pretty good. So let's take it over to the machine and run these last couple of steps. Make sure when you put on a machine that you are keeping your liner um, down so it doesn't get caught up between. Step number 17 does just that bottom line, and that bottom line only does this part. We're on 17, and 17 is just going to do a stitching at the bottom. Step 18 is actually going to go the rest of the bag. So it started here first, but now it's going to do the remainder of the bag to add the backing. To place the lining over this, and what it's going to do is tack down the um, bag except the opening for you to turn your bag. So this down here makes sure you have plenty of room um, to turn your bag to um, tuck it in. So um, take this down and then we're going to run step 18. And I would take this part down pretty good. All the way here, except for this piece here. I'm not going to take that. I'm just going to take my, or my sides. And then when I place it on the machine, I'm going to make sure that it stays like this. I'm going to peep under and look at it, make sure it's um, nice and straight. And for step 19, um, uh, mine says 21 because I put my decorative, um, my design at the end. Um, but I'm going to stop at step 19. With step 19, there is a little line there. Kimberly put it in there so it wouldn't um, stop at um, at the uh, midpoint and jam anything. So all it's going to do is put an extra stitch in there. You can do that or you can skip it. Like I said, you don't have to run that very last one. You can just leave that off. All right, so what I'm going to do now is unhoop it. 
I just looked on the back to make sure it had run. And I'm going to unhook this. Turn the wheel. I take mine down pretty good. So it's around this hoop. I'm just going to go ahead and take all this tape off because I like to go in here and save whatever I can. You never know what you can use to put the vinyl for. I'm take all that off. We should be ready to cut it. What we're going to do now is trim around the bag. We do not want to cut um, the flaps off at this point, and we're going to leave the zipper um, until we get ready to do a little bit closer edge trimming. Uh, I normally trim from the front because I like to make sure that I am not um, cutting into the um, the back all right so now that you have the bag cut out you could go in and notch it a little bit especially around the curves um you do this with sewing some people take all the notches out i do not i just kind of give it like little cuts some people actually cut the little triangles out. I just kind of notch it. I have to cut a little bit more of this out. I'm gonna cut a little bit more of this out. It's a little bulky for me. All right. So now we're gonna take the tape off at the bottom. That's our lining. And start turning. And all I'm doing is trying to um, move the bag from one side to the other. If it's your first time doing it, just be patient. Here we go. So the blue. The blue lining will be on both sides in a minute. And then we'll need to um, glue that together, whatever method you like. Some people stitch it, I am going to glue it. I'm gonna go ahead and set right here.
And then once you get it where the book, the lining is on both sides, this is where you're going to This is where you're going to um, close in your zipper on, this is where you're going to close in your lining. I just tuck it in and then I'm going to put a little clear glue. I use clear because if you get the white um, glue, it will peek through your, your fabric. Gonna put a little bit. And I'm gonna use some clips, some clips to uh, press it down and use some clips to clamp it. Okay, the clips I'm using. Just going to clip it together. And this only needs about five minutes. So you can just do your cleanup while you're waiting for it to tack down. And there it is clipped. All right, it's been maybe 10 minutes. I don't know. You only need five. So I'm going to iron that and then I'm going to start pressing these here these corners all right so I'm going to just poke out the corners and then start turning You can do it with your fingers, or you can get um, one of these turners, or you can get some dowels. Um, you can get a pack um, from Dollar Tree. If you use one of these things, um, just make sure you don't use the tip that would have the pointy part. I would use the round. You can just take it, start pressing. See how that popped it right out. I really like the dolls. And now at this point, um, the back is finished, but I do have to sew my strap. I am, I did a tutorial on that, so I'm going to link that for this. If you do not have a sewing machine to make your straps, you can purchase straps. Um, if you reach out to me, I can um, sell you straps. But I would suggest you get a sewing machine. Um, you can get you a cheap one if you don't have one already from Walmart. Um, I do have um, uh, other machines myself, but um, get one from Walmart and um, learn to sew. If you don't know already know how to sew, this would be a great addition to your repertoire. You can make all kinds of things with sewing. Um, I will even throw in a sewing group to help you begin in the description. So, this is the bag. Excited. It's done. Thanks for watching.